Hi everyone. Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca in Canada. It's a beautiful day in Montreal so we decided to join you from outside. We're going to start by discussing some recent developments in Canadian immigration. All these articles can be found in the news section on our website Immigration.ca. A lot of you have already sent in your questions. Please do leave any questions that you may have in the comments, and then we will be answering some of them at the end. And if you don't have a comment, that's fine. We'd still love to hear from you. Please do let us know which city and country you're joining us from. Without further delay, here's Colin. Thanks. Thanks, Andrea. Welcome, everyone. Again, as Andrea said, it's a spectacular day here in Montreal. It's been a great summer as well. And uh, we start today with our first live stream series, and I'll start to cover some important developments that have taken place in the industry. Uh, today, actually, there was an express entry draw, and the number of invitations that were issued was 750. Unfortunately, the CRS score was increased quite substantially to 538. This represents a big increase from last week when it was at, uh, sorry, from two weeks ago when it was at 490. Uh, what this means is people really need to have impeccable qualifications or alternatively you need to have a qualified job offer to come to Canada. Check out our analysis on the particular uh, effect of today's happening on our news section of our website. Another very important development that took place last week was that the Quebec government, which has exclusive authority to select its own immigrants to the province of Quebec, they held their intake, the second intake period this year. The first one was in June when 5,000 applications were uploaded into the system, uh, as we call it, the Projet Mon Projet Quebec. Uh, the second intake period took place last week when another 5,000 applications were accepted into the system. Unfortunately, the process concluded in a very quick period of time, in under three hours. The process is now filled. The quota has now been filled. Uh, if, however, you weren't successful in getting your profile into the system, there's hope because the Quebec government will be introducing a new immigration system. Is everything all right? Yeah? Looks good? No? Fine, so we're good. Could you just let us know if, if the quality of our sound is good? We're, we're doing our first live stream. We want to make sure you can hear us and see us quite clearly, but I think, I think you can. So the implication, if, if you didn't get to submit your profile uh, into, a, into the system last week, the Quebec government will be introducing a new immigration system. It's called expression of interest. That'll be, uh, the details of that will be revealed sometime towards the end of this year. We know the government plans to implement this in early 2017, and it will follow a process that's quite similar to the Federal Express Entry System. But uh, what you need to know is the Quebec government is looking to increase the number of people that it selects each year. Currently, the total number of people coming to Quebec is 50,000 approximately. That includes approximately 30,000 skilled worker applicants and next year or sometime in the near future the government wants to increase by 10,000 the number of people it brings to the province of Quebec and it's by far the most that any province has of, of people coming to a particular province. Another development that's quite interesting that took place is the federal government uh, has been engaged in discussion uh, regarding the settlement of immigrants to Canada. Currently, most immigrants are settling in the provinces of Ontario, uh, Quebec, and British Columbia, with Toronto and Vancouver being the ideal first choice destinations. 
the minister uh, has expressed, the, has, has engaged in discussion how uh, it would be ideal if immigrants were settling in uh, not just the major cities. Um, so they're looking at ways to perhaps encourage people to settle in other areas besides the two main cities of Canada. We have gone on record to say that we feel there needs to be collaboration with the provinces. We believe that the uh, municipalities need to come forward and engage in this discussion and create the right conditions for people to settle and, and, and maintain an interest throughout the process and after coming to Canada actually settle in the outlying areas of a particular province. This can be done in a number of ways. First and foremost, there can be tax credits given to newcomers to Canada. Of course, anyone coming to a particular province would be offered the opportunity to settle and given tax credits uh, if they settle in an outlying area. Other, area, other, uh, other ways to entice people to settle outside the major cities is to offer land purchase opportunities at reduced market rates and give people an opportunity to, to, to buy a home and give them a break on paying uh, property taxes for a, a certain period of time in the future. There's other ways as well, uh, but it really is up to the provinces to uh, foster the right conditions that will keep people in a particular area. The underlying uh, point that everyone needs to know is that we have a charter in Canada that allows people to freely move anywhere in Canada without formality. So once you become a permanent resident of Canada, it's very difficult to force uh, an individual to live in any one area. So this becomes a challenge for the uh, provincial governments and of course the federal government because obviously we don't want uh, a program where people are just choosing to live in one or two areas of the country, which is currently what often takes place. Uh, a third area that uh, has come uh, forward uh, in, in the uh, industry, and it flows from the second topic, is that the provinces have expressed interest, uh, oddly enough I use those words, but uh, they'd like to see the same powers that the Quebec government has. There has been recent news that the provinces would be uh, interested in, in negotiating a new deal with the federal government. However, we don't believe this will take place anytime soon. Quebec has a, a very unique position in the immigration industry, and it's very unlikely <clears throat> that the, the Canadian government would renegotiate the current framework that exists. Uh, it would be uh, too much power given to all the other provinces. I think there's regret over the years we've, we've, we've heard and we've, we've spoken with uh, policymakers. There is some kind of a regret that Quebec has so much power uh, that uh, is unmatched in the immigration industry. So we don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Again, the best way to foster individuals to settle in a particular province is to look at ways in creating the right conditions for people to want to stay in a particular area. Well, that really concludes uh, the main points that I wanted to share. Um, how about yourself? Okay. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. So the next topic is with regards to international graduates. Canada is an aging population, so we need new young graduates to support the economy. International students that graduate from Canadian institutions are exactly what Canada needs. They're young, they have Canadian qualifications, and they're ready to work. In order to attract more international students, as well as keep them in Canada, the Canadian government has decided to make changes to the express entry system. Therefore, they would like to grant the international students more points, thus increasing their chances for Canadian permanent residents. Further developments are expected in September, so please do follow us so we can keep you up to date. This brings us into our next topic, and that is the Canadian government's plans to change the immigration system. So as you're aware, we have a Liberal government, and they are pro-immigration. They see the need for an immigration system that benefits the economy as well as attracts the best foreign workers. Therefore, we need to change our immigration system and make it quicker and easier. Also, as in with many different countries, new residents often choose to settle in the larger cities. For example, Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. The government would like to make changes to 
to attract people to go to the smaller cities as well. So as mentioned, we do expect further developments in the fall, so please do stay in touch so we can keep you updated. Well, Colin, I think uh, we, we have some questions that have been sent in. Okay. Uh, should we go ahead and do some questions? Sure. Okay. So just... Okay, so the first question, it's from Anita, and she wants to know, is there a cap on the number of candidates in the express entry pool? Hmm. Well, that is a question that uh, people frequently raise. Uh, the answer to that is no. There is no restriction on the number of people that can apply and submit a profile into the express entry system. The government had indicated a while back that they're receiving approximately 1,500 new profiles per week. As the system uh, works, a profile will stay valid for 12 months, and if you don't receive an invitation in that 12-month window, your profile is automatically removed. There's no restriction on the number of individuals who can submit a profile as long as you meet the criteria which we've outlined on our uh, website. So the way the government controls the number of people that will actually come to Canada, of course, is is by limiting the number of invitations that they uh, issue for each periodic draw. So feel free to upload your profile and improve your profile score through the number of ways that we can discuss with you uh, in the future. Thank you, Colin. Okay, that brings us to another question from Rajesh. Uh, he wants to know, do I need a job to qualify under Express Entry? Hmm. Well, if you take a look at today's express entry draw, the, the answer to that seems to be it would be very helpful, it would be very valuable to have a qualified job offer if you're in the express entry pool. The answer to the question is you don't need a job offer, but if you don't have one, then of course you need to have a very, very strong profile. Typically, someone with a very strong profile is one who would be in their late 20s, perhaps early 30s, ideally have a master's degree, and have very, very high levels of English. And if you even have some basic levels in French, that would be very useful. For those who don't have the current profile that would lead to an invitation, which this draw that took place today was quite high, then, of course, you would want to have a job offer. You'd want to have a qualified employer coming forward because that would give you 600 points by itself and far more than is needed to qualify and receive an invitation under the express entry system. We can help all our clients in finding an employer. We have an excellent employment search consulting service that all our clients participate in. Uh, we have an in-house recruiting enterprise called Global Recruiters of Montreal, and it's part of the Global Recruiters Network, which is located in Chicago, Illinois. So we feel it's very important for all our clients to have access to employment opportunities in Canada, and we'd be interested in discussing how we can help with you in the future. Thank you. So, sorry. Sorry. And our next question is from Rolando. How long will express entry take? Well, that's uh, a very valid question because uh, you want to be able to predict, you want to be able to plan ahead. Unfortunately, if you don't have the profile that will give you the points needed, for example, in today's draw, 538 points, then it will take longer. It will take longer for you to either find an employer or wait until the points uh, the, the, the threshold score comes down, uh, or wait until a program opens uh, in one of the other provinces that are participating in the express entry system. If you receive an invitation, the time that it takes to come to Canada is very quick. It would be in less than six months. All our mandates are 24 months. We believe this is the time that is needed for individuals to secure the best profile either through employment or either through their own individual qualifications. So the range of time it takes is really a question, do you have the profile 
that is currently in demand is currently being chosen. If not, then the time would be needed, the time that you would have to plan is an unknown date in the future. And we hope during a 24-month period that our clients would succeed in their projects to Canada. Thank you. And then this brings us to a question from Nadia. She wants to know, well, she says, I am in the express entry pool. Can you help me get provincial nomination? Well, if you're in the express entry pool, securing nomination, either uh, you have the profile that is currently uh, being selected or you need an employer. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, we help all our clients in trying to find a qualified sponsoring employer. So contact us, let us know if uh, we can uh, be of service to you uh, because many of our clients do find work in Canada and are able to get through the system based on a, having a qualified sponsoring employer. We'll do one more question and this one is from Russell. He wants to know, is it more predictable for me to go through an investor program instead of express entry? The answer to that would be, if you have the qualifications to qualify for a business immigration program in, in Canada, there are quite a few programs currently uh, of interest, uh, it might be an option for you to consider. Uh, it would be something you would consider if you don't have the profile needed for an express entry um, draw that, that is currently uh, taking place. So if you don't have the points uh, that you, you need to have to receive an invitation to apply, um, and then, you know, the question is, how do you feel about finding an employer in Canada? But if you look at some of the business immigration programs, it's more predictable. If you meet the qualifications of, say, the Quebec Investor Program, which is currently receiving applications, uh, or if you, res if you have the profile for some of the other programs, then it might be strategically to your advantage to consider a business immigration uh, program uh, instead of the skilled worker program uh, via the express entry system. So the business program in some cases would be strategically advantageous for you. We'd be delighted to share with you our insight if a program is suitable for you. Okay, that's it. That's it. I think we've uh, covered any we, questions. We uh, have? We've yeah. covered our questions. Do you want to wrap up? Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Please do check us out at www.immigration.ca. If you have any questions with regards to what was discussed or if you would like to, you know, if you have any comments, please also do let us know through our social media. Uh, but I, you know, it, was, it was a pleasure speaking with all of you, and please do join us again for our next live stream series. Thank you very much. Bye for now.